What's the concerns right now about the president launching what some are calling a trade war with China, but then this eclipsed it. Uh, news that his lead attorney was quitting, leaving, and we don't know exactly why John Dowd is doing that. He might have been just sort of the odd man out here, but he's out, and a lot of people read into that, continue to read into that, all sorts of awful things. Whether that is necessarily the case or not, uh, Wall Street sells first, maybe starts analyzing or reassessing things later. Right now, we're in the selling phase. The Dow looking at its worst performance uh, so far since February 8th, uh, down about 477 points right now. We've got Dow Jones Newswire's chief uh, editor, Glenn Hall, Fox Business's Charlie Gasparino, and market watcher, Melissa Armo. Melissa, as we look at this now, we're also going to be waiting to hear uh, from the budget director is going to spell out the spending battle, which is another issue because the, the, we might be looking at a shutdown late tomorrow night. But all this came together fast, didn't it? Yeah, it's a kind of the perfect storm, but I really think it started Monday. Monday, actually, and I'm going to preface this by saying long term, I'm very bullish in the market, but Monday was the most bearish day in 2018 for me when I look at it technically, because I look at technicals, and here's why. Because we opened, we gapped down, we opened, and we sold off all day. It was just straight selling down. And even yeah. that day that we had that big sell Let's off. Let's focus on today. Yeah. What do you okay. make of today? Today, What's we're going we're to continue to sell off. We're going to continue to sell off. And again, so any sort of rumor, nastiness, anything, just they bounce, they sell. We don't even need a reason. The market's selling off. We're, we're not near the highs. We're coming in. But yep. again, overall, we're strong. But today, we're going to sell off. So if you're in the market long term, I don't think there's a reason to panic. But if you're a year away from retirement, then maybe you should take some profit. A common theme here seems to be anything that looks like the president could be in trouble, even if it's way overdone, yep. the markets take a hit. Right. We've been talking about this for a while. I mean, usually... Um, you know, at first, the Mueller probe was not existential to the market, and now it is. And uh, at least it, there's an algorithm that's plugged into anything Mueller-related, including John Dowd. We should point out that John Dowd... This lawyer's resignation, is, the VIX went nuts. Went, went nuts. Shooting up 20 Right. I mean, that, and that's been happening a lot with Mueller stuff, and we've been reporting that out. Now, why is that happening? I, I think the market is, is, is sensing. This is the market. So I'm not saying J Donald Trump is guilty. The market is sensing that there is something more here and that this is not just uh, a nothing burger. This is not, um, you know, deep state. This is that 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 Mueller has has him on something. Uh, I will say one other thing, though. Um, the trade stuff is another thing that's existential to this market. And just look at it this way. If you're a long term investor and listen, I, I like the fact that he's cutting taxes. But think about what they're doing. They are they're engaging in protectionism. They, we are, we, we're probably going to get higher budget deficits, uh, you know, because the first year of the tax cut does not produce the revenue that, and so you get higher interest rates. You get all that together, and you got some instability in the White House, and that, that's it not. It doesn't a, take much to push it. In other words, Glenn, um, now, uh, Dowd was the, the the lead personal attorney for the president. He was at loggerheads with some of the other lawyers, so maybe this is not worthy of even a Fox alert here. But but it does raise to Charlie's points concerns. What else don't we know? Right. right. Yeah, there were tensions there about whether or not the president should or shouldn't give an interview with Robert Mueller. And Dowd was on the other side of that thinking he shouldn't. Um, so you see that. supported by a lot of other lawyers, including our own Dejana Napolitano, was it, it's never good for a president to do that and set himself up for something, especially one who talks. Yeah, about. and the Trump administration also is, is bolstering the legal team on his defense side. So that gives reason to believe that they're preparing for a bigger fight. So that could be well, also playing on this. I, a different fight. We should point out this weekend was not a very good weekend for John Dowd. I know John a little bit, covered him when he, as a white-collar attorney, very famous for giving the press the finger. Remember that whole thing? Okay. During the Raj Raj Rotten trial, he, he was uh, he was, uh, he was was representing Raj on the uh, insider trading charges and lost the case. John Dowd is a fighter, okay? He's a courtroom fighter, okay? Where this is interesting is that they have now hired Joe DeGeneva, another lawyer I know, who is not necessarily a courtroom fighter, but he's a media fighter. He will go on air and he will fight like hell and he will be and he's very, very persuasive. My guess is that the Trump Trump and his and whoever's around him advising him and it's I, I don't exactly know who it is. Uh, they're saying that this Mueller thing is taking a turn. And this is one thing you could surmise. We're going to need to go public with this. And, you, you know, here's one thing I should tell you. Impeachment is not necessarily legal. Impeachment is political. It's I, public. I don't think it's good for we're, the country. We're I, I, we're saying, for the country. I know that. I know that. But think about what he's thinking. If you're game planning as a lawyer, we're going to have to sway public opinion. We get rid of a guy that's not necessarily good on TV, and we bring in a really good guy on TV, Joe, Joe DeGeneva. That's you can. How you much can of this market's that. fate, Melissa, is built on the president and and him being politically stable? 
Well, I would, since we ran up since he got elected, obviously the market has liked Trump. But I think overall, people don't like this. It's just not good. I mean, right. it's not a good feeling. He it's is like our president. It's an uncertainty that they don't need. It's an uncertainty. Yeah. It's sell now and worry about it later because you can always buy it back in. So I think the market is just reacting. So reacting. anything that looks, and we've seen this before, right? I mean, we see a, right. a, a development today that looks, oh, Amy Mueller's going after him or the Russians that were, were seized uh, who, who might have been, you know, willing perpetrators and all this. Market sells all. Then you find out no American entity was. Was, was taken in the markets come back we've seen this again and again and again that's right there's a lot of uh, sort of volatility back in the markets and you know we were bouncing off those highs so there was some you know right. hesitation there but what you're seeing i think is exactly the the reflection of will this president be able to continue to champion the kind of changes that have made the market happy so far that's or right. will the rubber meet the road um I, I mean listen one thing to erase this if if we had a gdp print today of 3.2 percent anything above three this market would reverse and I think that the market is just pricing in the fears that I think, you know, the economy is not going to respond to the tax cuts as much. We might get higher deficits, higher interest rates, uh, a trade war. But if the thing that cures that always for markets is better corporate earnings and better economic growth. And if we yeah. get those two. Then this is a We're big still buy. bullish. The market's still an uptrend. We could sell off all day today. We could sell off all week. We could sell off all month. I mean, the, the areas. For the year, that, though. It, 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 I know, but we've been up. We've been Don't going you find straight him to up. Be a very jaded person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a glass. He's like the answer. opposite of me. That's why you sat us next to <laughs> each other. There's a, there's a lot of different things going on all at once, <laughs> yeah, as you were noting before. You can seize on a lot of concerns here. I don't, I'm right. not going to characterize as positive and or trade negative, wars. But yeah, you've got the trade war thing that could escalate the fact that the president now has extended this to intellectual property. That's that's a weird one. And the tech sector on. is the one that has been driving the bus, right? Absolutely. And then it is the tech sector right now that seems to be just in and out of correction territory once again here. So they're feeding on not only Facebook, but virtually everyone that's right. going along. Amazon, when last I thought that was down to almost 40 bucks. Um, it's had a great run up He's to had, your they point. They've had a great run up. Things yeah. can't go up in a straight line forever. I mean, be realistic. Wait a let, me, let me write that yeah. down. Can't go <laughs> and up also, in a straight line. Yeah. Yeah, and they won't yeah, go but to when you, when you, I, I, But, you know, the market has cut Amazon the biggest break in the world. They say, we don't care about your earnings, which aren't so great, as you know. But, you know, because you're Amazon and everybody's going to you and you're, you're, you have all these great management and you have a great product, we cut you a break and you could trade a gazillion times earnings. Okay, if we engage in a, in a trade war that affects tech, yeah. it doesn't take much for that, for that mentality among analysts and investors to turn. And I'm just saying that... This China is, is a problem, though. China is a problem. They've been stealing all of the this intellectual property. That doesn't mean so you're that. okay with this response? I'm telling you that short-term, the market may not like it, but long-term, it's better for the economy. Do do? I think it's but better you, for the country. But do you yeah. think Amazon keeps going straight line up if we're going to get into this this match? This, 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 no, maybe you know it doesn't, what? but so yeah. what? I mean, it's still strong. So after two, right, so just, two years, for those of you just losses. tuning in right now, we're uh, in and out of session lows here. The Dow down about four to fifty points. Nasdaq one hundred, a good proxy for technology. Uh, that's getting really clobbered today, down better than eight percent. Again, the fears seem to be uh, that all this is coming together at the worst of times. So what a lot of people are selling now and asking questions later. I do not, and I hope I did not at the outset of the show read way too much into the John Dowd resignation outside of say it, he is a big deal. He is the president's lead personal attorney, and he was, uh, uh, again, as our guest have pointed out here, uh, very instrumental in trying to urge the president, don't talk to this guy. There's no upside to talking to this guy. Others have been back and forth within the president's legal team, I'm told, to at least find the parameters in which they would sit down and talk to him. I think even taking written questions, right? There's a lot of different ways they could frame that and to sort of constrain the amount of the uh, inquiry. And that's yeah. what they would want to do. Quit? The do we know the means by which he quit? Yeah. Did he... Sometimes it's like if you quit in a huff, it's one thing versus They called just, it a mutual uh, agreement. Oh, he quit in a huff. I mean, remember, right. this weekend was not like a great weekend for him. And, you know, he's, yeah. he, he really, I mean, you know, he was he, he showed a degree of instability by basically saying the president approved it. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Now, I know he's working for a guy that's volatile, but still, you know, he is theoretically the lead, the lead attorney. But, you know, I tell you. There's a, what was really interesting about in December, I reported that Trump was telling people that he thinks the thing, the Mueller probe would be over very soon. And I remember what I told, what I reported. I reported this on Stu's show first. And I, and cause it Why was did kind you of an, do his show first? Because he asked me and I was ordered to do it. But sorry. But anyway, no, he's remember, only just recently an American citizen. I find that a little. <laughs> yeah, that's, but that's fine. Go very ahead. unpatriotic. <laughs> yeah, <go ahead. laughs> but but when I remember what, you know, so I said, Stu, there's one thing we have to keep in mind. And when Trump t said this to people, he said it to a, 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 a source of mine. The source came back and said, Donald, be careful here because Mueller will, you know, he may, you, he may not be finding 
direct collusion, but he's looking at your private business interests as well. And that's where this... Do we know whether there. Dowd was concerned the president was starting to tweet Mueller by name? Because that, that got a lot of Republicans. That, yeah, that, that, who knows? I mean, I think that would probably, any lawyer in the in the Well, right when line. you were that as an investor, and, you, and, and regardless of your okay. opinion on that, where this case is going, that's another level of, you know, in your face when you start mentioning the guys investigating you, his name. I know, but this is what got Trump elected. I know that. I understand yeah. that. But for, from your perspective... Did it change the game and make you think, all right, I'm in for more volatility here? Definitely. We started the year with a bang with volatility, and we're, it's going to continue. I don't think it stops anytime soon. As long as this investigation, You're as long as the trade wall. You don't care about the price. Yeah, yeah, you, know, you know what? The volatility's right. here to stay. You, you know what traders told me? Well, I spoke to a lot of traders. I said, what do you make of that? Because, you know, listen, politics is, is the markets right now. It's in, they said he sounds guilty. I'm just telling you, when you start like... But don't like, you start think the American people are sick of this? Don't you think far it's, ahead it's, of the, of yeah. the news no, cycle? No, 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 but yeah. when you, if he had nothing... Listen, it's a logical inference. I'm not saying he is. But if you're, like, not worrying about it, why are you tweeting in the middle of the night? On this. Because he likes to tweet. They've been so, so fast that he doesn't or, or, he's, or he's really worried. It's been going on for a year, though. They haven't found anything. Right. It's like I, a already. How do you know, that? You know? Do you know it, that? You don't well, know what he's Well, let me step back from this. And... and um, this is coming at the same time some Republicans are getting antsy about their prospects for November and holding on to the House or the Senate. Um, it's looking increasingly iffy for the House. Uh, and then all, all along come this, this heated and, and back and forth with the FBI, the Justice Department, Mueller. Then you get a trade war going, which goes against the, not, uh, you know, the, the DNA of a lot of Republicans, many of whom have said, you know, you're going too far. Kevin Brady, the House Ways and Means chief and the architect of these tax cuts, had said that a trade war risks wiping out any of the tax cut gains. So they're getting nervous. His own party is getting nervous. Right? Well, there's some reason to be nervous in, in a sense, especially if you look at many of the Midwestern agricultural states that could be hit by a backlash from China. And those were states that Trump carried in mostly. Uh, so there's there's a little bit of... Do you think China then goes after the... I think soybeans. That's that's what products, the Wall Street right? Journal is hearing. Is yeah. that uh, you know the China retaliation would be Wall go back Journal after soybeans. Or, <laughs> I believe everything that they write. Come on. So, but that's <laughs> on the editorial. That China page. then will <laughs> respond in kind. If you're going to slap us with penalties, we're not going to waste too much time slapping but, you. But it's not even that. It's all, it's that plus the fact that there are industrial states that that rely on on cheaper um, raw materials like aluminum and steel. Well, you and I have talked to him for many. Decades, right? Right. Uh, Donald Trump, I'm saying. And, and one of the things he has always said is uh, China's a paper tiger. We're more afraid of them than we should be. Uh, they need us a lot more than we well, need that's them. Weird. And, and that it has always been his youth, which is why he is so but not sure that's, he's right with this. And he's, and he's putting it in the context of jobs. China is Absolutely. taking jobs okay, from America. But, but, that message but does let's, work. But right. let's, let's do balance sheet analysis here. You raise tariffs on steel that may save some jobs in the steel manufacturing in the steel sector it could hurt jobs in in other manufacturing if they ever have to go into a factory but, 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 but these china tariffs are a different thing. thing they're targeting intellectual property they're targeting that's these right. kinds See, of that's relationships that's a weird thing that elevated to a level that we haven't seen in trade they did back an fbi forth. investigation on it there's real evidence that it's happening i think the really positive thing that's happening with this is that we are asserting that we're a world power the united states once again china has been doing this for so long you're not worried about any of this other stuff, are you? No. You're just going to make money hand over fists. <laughs> well, the technology transfer that companies are forced to do in China has been a big issue globally. Yeah. Uh, the only real challenge right now is that the U.S. is going it alone. Listen, this is, That's right. this is let's just be real clear who's calling the shots on this in the administration. It's not Larry Kudlow who just went there. It's not it's not Mnuchin, it's Peter Navarro, and uh, he's the guy. If you, We just need to read up on Peter Navarro to know where, and, and to some extent Wilbur Ross to know, and Peter Navarro is a, is a longtime economist. Well, he's big on... He's written books on this. Yeah, and the I mean, that, this is, and this is He thinks we are at economic war uh, with China, and he's convinced the president we are, and we should take and these didn't steps. didn't Navarro say that, look, playing nice and trying not to go tit for tat has gotten us in the problem yes. we're in right yes, now? Yes, he believes and that. And I think you have to factor in that the president also has been making good on every campaign promise he delivered. He's out there every day trying yeah. to make sure that everybody remembers, I'm doing what I said I would but do. Remember, trade, being, being this sort of trade thing that he's involved in with this, these tariffs, he's using it more as a blunt instrument than as a... Than, than That's a, what I think, a threat. But I it think can get out of control. It, then you it, have to it, go it, ahead and, and do what you say. And then you start hurting yourself. He's creating That's a bargaining position, really. perhaps, yeah. though. Listen, I hope you're right. Uh, the spending this measure, let's say tomorrow night, um, guys, we're going to take a quick break here because we have to pay our bills, even though the nation apparently can't pay its. Um, 
Do you get a sense, Glenn, that uh, a deal like this isn't worth, from the people you talk to, because a lot of Republicans are saying this, a deal like this driving us deeper into debt um, and showing no fiscal austerity uh, is not worth it. It's, it's even worth a government shutdown. There are a number of Republicans who are feeling that way right now, and they've said so publicly that, you know, look, and you saw the president's tweet as well about, you know, the giveaway for the Dems was the price to get the other things that you wanted the money for. Yeah, because he supports this so far. Yeah. That's right. So there's, there's a tension in, in all of they that. They have to pass this. Thing. But you can't, you can't shut the government down again, it, yeah, right? I don't think so. That's none of my... And they won the last one that. against Chuck Schumer. I don't know if they want to go that way. Yeah, I mean, but I it's think... that one vote in the Senate that is the real I trick. think for investors, I don't think the budget is the big thing. I think it's we're walking into normalization, a possible trade war, higher deficits. That's the negative. The positive is the tax cuts and the less regulation, which wins out, the only way you know is through corporate earnings and GDP, and if the if those are good, well, then you buy. And the Fed just raised its outlook, so they're showing some positive signals. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. the very thing that concerns yeah. them, higher interest rates, is built on an improving economy. The one thing that's important, though, remember, banks make more money when rates are higher. People true, bring right? more deposits and they can lend more. So I haven't seen that transfer effect yet. Not yet. No, not yet. but I'm saying you're, gonna, you're not going to have a weak market and strong banks. You're going to have, when you have strong banks, you're going to have a strong market. It. So if the banks yeah. are going to get stronger with the rates on the rise, it's going to help the market. Yeah, but it's the all banks goes get weaker together. with trade, with protectionism. You like the president, you like the policies, you think he's safe, the market roar will continue, everybody calm down. I don't know if Trump is safe or not, but I think it's... You don't really care. No, I think, I think the American people are tired of this whole Mueller thing. I think it's been going on long enough, they haven't found anything. You know, we're waiting to see if well, they found something. we don't know something. if they found that. Right. Well, we don't where know is that. it? You know, know. Lawyers are yeah. quitting left and right. Sad, very sad, all of you. All right, we are waiting a couple of things we're going to be hearing, and we're going to monitor uh, the budget director, Mick Mulvaney. He's going to go over uh, the details of that $1.3 trillion spending plan. I think he gets us through the end of the fiscal year, right? The six-month deal to sort of keep keep the, the government lights on here. Uh, but not everyone is in love with that. He'll detail why the administration is supporting it, even though they, they're doing so, holding their nose. We're also going to get more details again on what the president's going to outline in better than 50, some say as high as $60 billion in tariffs uh, against China. Uh, we have never taken such a sweeping move against a single country. Keep in mind, uh, we have been running a $375 billion deficit, trade deficit against the Chinese. So this would just represent a fraction of that. But nevertheless, it would be an opening salvo that even the French uh, leader, Macron, had said it would be a mistake. I don't, what is French for mistake? Le, mis le mistake. All right, we have a lot more coming up. You are watching Fox Business. This program is brought to you by Burger King. Mix or match two of our favorite sandwiches for just six bucks. The spice is on with this one. A blend of cayenne pepper and spices coats a seasoned 100% white meat chicken filet. It's the crispy, juicy, and new spicy crispy chicken. Now